Good day, um, I'm Valentine Akandi, the Medical Director of the Bristol Centre for Reproductive Medicine in the United Kingdom. It's a pleasure to be speaking to you today about um, optimising your fertility. Um, I think it's important to make clear that for the vast majority of patients or for people, um, getting pregnant is pretty routine. However, I take it that if you're listening to this um, um, webinar or this video, it means you may have experienced some difficulty getting pregnant. And um, for this reason, we'll be going through some things that might help you um, increase your prospects of uh, getting pregnant. So again, to emphasize that for most people, um, getting pregnant will not be a challenge, but for a certain proportion of people it would be. And studies suggest that one in six couples seek help getting pregnant and one in four couples um, uh, experience difficulty. It is very rare that people are infertile. What happens is that some people just have some things that are reducing their chances of getting pregnant. And really, our job as fertility specialists are twofold. One is to try and establish why you might be experiencing difficulty. And the second thing is to look at things that can be done to increase your chances. So again, one, to explore why you might be experiencing difficulty. And then two, to provide you with specific advice as to what can be done to increase your chances. That cannot be done through this video and for very specific advice, you might need to book an appointment with your local fertility specialist um, who can then look at your situation individually and make personalized um, um, recommendations. So what I'll be talking about today is very general and not, uh, not always uh, specifically directed to you if you have a particular um, condition. And um, when we think about fertility, there are really three things to, um, to remember, and that is MOT. And MOT, the M starts with a man, i.e. is there good quality sperm. And the O is, relates to ovulation, ovarian reserve and oocytes, i.e. Are you producing eggs? Are you releasing them? And do you have a good ovarian reserve? And the T relates to the fallopian tubes or the anatomy, i.e. Um, the tubes blocked or um, open um, because the egg travels down the fallopian tubes um, to meet the sperm and then is fertilized within the tube and then implants within the womb cavity. As long as all these factors are normal, then your prospects generally are quite good. But we know that about one in four couples um, actually have what's known as unexplained infertility, i.e. we'll find that sperm's normal, we'll find that tubes are normal, and we'll find that they're ovulating, but they're still not getting pregnant. Now, don't worry if this is your situation, because uh, actually the prognosis is quite good and fertility treatment usually in these circumstances is quite effective. Having said that, um, we do know that um, helping people get pregnant or people getting pregnant very much is also related to physiology. What do I mean by physiology? Well, physiology um, very much relates to what happens normally. For example, we, when, you're, when you're just born, you wouldn't um, you won't be expected to walk or talk immediately, uh, nor when you're 100 years old would you be expected to run a marathon. So there, the same thing happens with fertility. Um, you're most fertile when you're younger and you become less fertile as you get older. So the, the best reproductive age tends to be between the ages of 18 and 45. Um, but from the age of about 31, fertility does begin to decline and it tends to become a bit more profound after the age of 37. This clearly doesn't mean you can't get pregnant in your late 40s, i.e. 47, even 48, but the chances are much lower um, 
when you're older. So one of the key messages to get across about boosting your fertility is really not delaying, i.e. the sooner you try, the better. And people often ask, um, uh, when's the best time? And my answer is always very simple. Your chances today are better than tomorrow and your chances yesterday are better than they are today. And that's a simple principle. It's not as if you each reach the age of 40 and then your chances um, um, just um, decline immediately. It's a gradual process. So generally you want to start trying sooner rather than later. And, and you recall I mentioned not too long ago about um, most people who are struggling not being infertile. In fact, I don't like the, using the word um, infertility because it's very rare that people are infertile. Generally, people who are struggling have degrees of subfertility. Uh, what that means is that they have degrees um, um, of where they are struggling um, uh, to get pregnant and it can be looked at as looking at a dice. So if you've been trying for two years, been trying for pregnancy for two years, then technically by the end of that two years, your chances of getting pregnant each month is about one in 20 or 5% per month. Our job then is to try and get you to a place where we can increase your chances. For example, if you're young, uh, 30, we can get you to a chance of about 50%, where it's a one in two chance. So the concept really is if you're having difficulties, you, we have to look at it as in, as in dice. You know, what are your chances? Are your chances one in 10, one in five, one in 20? And what can we do to increase your chances? So if you, for example, you come to us and say, you've only been trying for two months, we'll say go away and continue trying because actually for most cases we won't need to do anything and you'll get pregnant um, um, naturally. But if you've been trying for a longer period of time, six months or more, particularly if you're older, then you might need um, you might need help. And to give you some figures, if you're 25, we would expect over 90% of uh, couples to got pregnant by um, after trying within, uh, within a year, whilst if you're 40, um, about 50% will get pregnant within a year. So you can see that um, the chances change depending on your age. I mentioned as well that sperm quality um, does matter. And from sperm quality, um, the only way to assess sperm quality really is to do a sperm test. Um, and if this reveals problems, then we'd normally recommend that you repeat the sperm test in three months because it takes three months for sperm to grow, or about 90 days. So if there's a problem with sperm and you make any changes, it takes about 90 days for, for that um, to, 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 to get better. And some simple things that could help include um, taking um, antioxidants, uh, doesn't always help but sometimes it does. The other things you want to do is to avoid drinking, smoking and consuming excessive amounts of alcohol. Also the testicles are intentionally located outside the uh, main cavity of the body in order to keep them about one degree cooler. So you also want to make sure that your testes um, are kept cool so you want to wear loose underwear rather than um, tight underwear and you want to avoid things like cycling for um, um, cycling for um, um, hundreds of, of miles. So um, many people often ask uh, what can I do to boost my fertility um, by diet and I often explain that there's no such thing as a fertility diet and the reason is we're all very different like uh, if I prescribe a diet for, uh, for you uh, a food you don't like it's not you're unlikely to um, uh, to comply and therefore we won't achieve much the key thing about fertility is to have a balanced diet and that includes carbs um, proteins and fats and many people try and include exclude fats but fats in fact for many people are important particularly um, if you're underweight so the key thing 
It's a balanced diet, everything in moderation, and of course um, have fruits and vegetables. Um, that's um, you know, pretty basic. And um, generally, as long as you have um, a good diet and you're not overweight nor underweight, both being overweight or underweight can um, also have a um, adverse if, uh, if effect on your prospects of conceiving. The same applies to exercise. Exercise is good, but excessive exercise can also be harmful. So if you're planning to run a marathon, 10, 10K, um, um, or something like that, that can reduce your chances of getting pregnant. Uh, other thing to um, be really aware of is exposure to volatile organic compounds or noxious substances. So if you smoke, Smoking actually reduces your chances of um, getting pregnant by about 50%. And that's whether the male or female smokes. And also being exposed or in the company of people who smoke, that's even if you don't smoke yourself, also significantly reduces your chance. So you really want to be away from um, noxious um, um, substances. Now, one thing people always ask about is stress. Um, I'm yet to meet anybody who's experienced fertility difficulties who doesn't experience a degree of stress because we appreciate how um, um, how important this is to you. We know how profound an effect this can have on your life and that's why we take it seriously. But also uh, most fertility specialists also offer specialist um, um, treatment support or counseling for those with fertility problems. The good news, however, is that um, research studies show that stress um, doesn't tend to affect the outcome of fertility um, treatments unless the stress is profound, such as when it um, stops you having periods. Ideally, of course, you would rather avoid stress so that you're able to have intercourse at uh, natural times and uh, doesn't affect your other aspects of your well-being. But uh, rest, uh, be rest assured that actually it doesn't appear to have a profound effect on your fertility. In terms of timing of intercourse, the key message is you want to have intercourse before ovulation. For those who notice um, cervical mucus um, or in the vagina um, around uh, the time of ovulation, that's good time to, to have intercourse. And you can have it every other day leading up to ovulation or every day. Um, but once ovulation has occurred, unfortunately, um, by then it's, it's too late. So for those of you who measure your temperature, once your temperature rises, it's, it's too late. You want to make sure you've had um, intercourse before that. I think one other thing that's important to mention is herbal remedies. There are lots of herbal remedies purported out there on the internet to be beneficial for fertility. In fact, research studies have shown that quite a number of them are harmful. So please seek spe uh, specific advice. Um, things like aspirin or ibuprofen, um, you can take them when you have a period, but don't take them at the time of ovulation because they can prevent you ovulating. If you're on any specific medication, please ask for advice. Um, for those of you who need lubricants, there are some that are better than others, but there are no lubricants that make sperm travel faster um, than others. So what are some other things you can do? Well, there's one thing, um, um, it's one thing to get pregnant, the other thing is to maintain a pregnancy because, of course, there's also the risk of miscarriage, and the risk of miscarriage also increases with advancing age. But um, there are, uh, there's evidence that taking simple preconception vitamins such as folic acid, vitamin D, and even um, supplements as B12, and you don't need to buy them. Um, or separately, but you can buy standard preconception vitamins from pharmacists um, and that can be beneficial. Um, if you drink alcohol, you certainly don't want to be drinking more than four units a week and not in one go. And you don't want to be taking more than two caffeinated um, drinks a day. Um, if you are a bit older or you have a poor vein reserve, then things like coenzyme Q10 might help. Um, if you have irregular periods, it's best you seek advice. And <clears throat> there are ways in which we can assess your vein reserve these days, either by blood test or by or by or by 
um, or by um, undertaking ultrasound scans. So I hope you found this um, um, information helpful. The key message is for most people, um, getting pregnant would be a challenge. And the way to look at fertility is also to look at it in terms of chances, i.e. like throwing a dice. The more times you try, the more likely you are to get pregnant. Um, that applies whether you're trying naturally or with fertility treatment. Once again, thanks for listening. And I'm Valentine Candy uh, from the Bristol Centre for Reproductive Medicine in the UK.